in there and bad things. So for to maintain the good things, we had to agree to the bad things. Um, but we did file a grievance immediately the next day uh, after we signed that uh, on those strike protocols because they were denying people sick leave and they were denying uh, sabbatical leave that had already been started and, and granted. And um, so people had to um, ask for exceptions in those cases. And um, we just think that we just thought those are vested rights and they should have honored them. So we walked out on Monday the 12th uh, at noon. So we made sure that we picked that time so that it would be invisible. And we were lucky. It was a beautiful sunny day. And so uh, we walked out and made, uh, made quite a show of it. Uh, we uh, continued to be on strike all the way till um, the 5th of March. But that last weekend um, of that third week, um, it was a, a marathon um, bargaining. So no conciliators this time. And all of a sudden, the Board of Governors was interested in actually negotiating. So for the first time on March 1st, we engaged in real negotiations with sitting down and looking for solutions and counters and so forth. And so we ran through this period um, we took advantage of that, and we were very happy that this was happening. And we finally reached a tentative agreement at 4.30 a.m. on the 5th. Um, and we also, alongside of that, with the return to work protocols. And, of course, they were trying to get us to sign one and not the other, and we had to play that game all through the night in order to say we're not signing protocols until they are signed together, our tentative agreement and our return to work protocols. By now, of course, we have no trust in them. I mean, they had been lying. Um, they had been uh, jerking us around for, for months. And so there was no way we can trust them. That same day, uh, 5th of March, our members ratified the tentative agreement at 4 p.m. And uh, on 6 March, our members returned to work. So we were off for three, three weeks and, and a few days. So um, our mobilization, as was mentioned earlier, was quite great and our solidarity was quite great. It wasn't just a fake kind of a show strike vote. We had a very strong solidarity. We were greatly organized for the strike thanks to our job action committee, our executive. Um, they put together a great headquarters. I mean, everything worked so beautifully. Uh, through the strike, even though we had no experience with that, the last time the Mount Howe strike was when they first unionized in 19, I think it was in 1989, that they had their strike in order to get that first collective agreement. And as was mentioned, our communication was quite aggressive. We were actually quite a lot out there. We had a great committee uh, for communication. So in the press, we were there in interviews and in press releases, but our social media was also uh, really well done. Uh, contrary to, to the board, um, the students, of course, were very active, both on the picket line and their social media and in interviews with the press and so forth. So that's something that we've had the luck to have at the Mount is, is really strong student support. We are like a small university and we tend to know our students. Uh, we just develop relationships with our students. And so that makes it easier then to, to mobilize them as well to our cause. And we were also lucky that this board of governors and the, the leadership were absent. Like they were just not showing face, right? I mean, Isabel No, our, um, our VP admin spoke once in a while, but it was she was clearly uncomfortable. Um, but they were basically absent. And in fact, they were so absent that the chair of the board was away uh, on whiskey tours in Dublin during conciliation in January, and so was our president. She was she was vacationing in Bermuda, while we we're you know at the table with the conciliators trying to iron out a tentative agreement. Very lacking in leadership. Um, so not only is it that there were the person the the hired person didn't negotiate, they were just not uh, engaged at all with with the community and with the what was going on with our our labor relations. But it worked for us. It kept our salt and kept our members mobilized, right? There, um, that they weren't there uh, to participate in any way. Uh, the board of governors in, in only worked within, uh, mostly worked within our campus bulletin, campus-wide bulletin, providing inaccurate 
misleading and sometimes right, outright lies uh, in their campus bulletins. Um, what they did get out in the press through interviews and so forth was also very inaccurate and misleading. And of course, they accuse us of doing that too, but we have evidence. <laughs> we have evidence of, of to that effect, and they don't have any evidence to the effect that we what we said was um, inaccurate or or untrue. Um, we were also lucky that, you know, as all, all unions have small number of disruptors, people who don't want to go on strike, uh, people who are not involved with the union, they think that the union is something separate from them. But again, we were very lucky that we had only a handful of such uh, members who were disruptive at meetings. You know, they took up uh, a lot of space and, and time, but at the end of the day, didn't um, weren't successful in and strain, like getting us straight from our, our mission was to get a good, reasonable, fair agreement. So um, it was, uh, again, these were all things that happened, good things that happened uh, for us during our, our strike. The return was um, the classes resumed on 7 March. So we the members got back on the 6th, and then we had to hurry up because classes were resuming on the 7th. Uh, and Senate was going to meet on the 8th to decide on what to do with those missing three weeks. But we had uh, started our strike before our reading week, and that was intentional because we, because of the timing of the conciliation and the no board report, that was a question was, what do we do? We have reading week happening uh, the following week, the week of the, um, the 18th, the 19th. And so we decided that we would actually start striking the week before that even though the week there would be one week there was um, the reading week for our students, it was intentional so that our students are not uh, penalized as much as if we had gone afterward. Uh, and again, the students recognize that that we are actually concerned about their education, even though these people were going on about how they were going to save their education and so forth, they were actually um, hypocritical about that. And students read them quite well. Um, on the 12th of March, in our return to work protocols, we were supposed to meet with the joint committee because our contract was supposed to start July 1st, 2023. So oh, now we're into March. So deadlines for reappointment, tenure, permanence and promotion, uh, timelines for um, applying for funds, all these things were all out of whack. And, and many of those things were changing in this new agreement. Uh, we did get a lot of that language in um, during that marathon in which we reached the, the tentative agreement. Now, it wasn't really like I'd like to think that we did. We put a lot of pressure, but at the end of the day, we found out that um, this lawyer on the other side, because it was reading week, but it was also March break uh, coming up. And so March break was coming up and they had plans to go away. So they, they couldn't go away for, and they had plans to go for two weeks. And so they couldn't keep us on strike for five or six weeks because then for sure the semester would be lost. So we believed that this was the case, that this person was probably anticipating to go away and so wanted to wrap this up um, because all of a sudden there was a change of heart that wasn't there before. And surely enough, uh, once we had the tentative agreement, uh, that lawyer's automatic reply was they were away on vacation. So it was we had a good hypothesis that turned out to be confirmed. So we wanted to uh, meet with a joint committee that was part of our return to work protocols. And uh, we waited and our president had to, they're, they're very unresponsive. It takes multiple uh, times to email them with no acknowledgement on the other side. And finally, on the 25th of March, we did meet uh, with the other party to extend those deadlines, uh, clarify as well the retroactive pay, because we have people on leaves uh, that are top, have top up benefits and make sure that that's covered. And also we have phased in retirement. So it wasn't just regular salary, that anything that was salary based would also have to be retroactive till July 1st, 2023. And this round we managed to um, integrate we have we have a professional fund for for professional costs but we also have a travel fund so we were successful in integrating both of them but in the meantime like our current not new agreement had a deadline at the end of march uh, to apply for travel funds so we did um, negotiate uh, in that marathon a transitional um, article for that 
but members don't have access to this tentative agreement yet because it's not even drafted. So how do we make sure that they understand what are their rights um, as we're transitioning into this new? So we we ended up having actually a pretty productive meeting. There wasn't too many, um, actually there wasn't any uh, problems at this meeting regarding um, clarifying these. And then on the 28th of March, the Vice President Academic and Provost did send a memo to members with all of all of what we agreed to as um, in our return to protocols dictated. On the 5th of April, uh, in between that, of course, we had an exec meeting and we had a general meeting and we released a vote of uh, no confidence in our board chair, in our president and in our two vice presidents. Now, understanding that this could hurt our labor relations further, but really we have nothing to lose. Up until this point, um, our labor relations were nil, so there was really no danger to make them worse. They couldn't be any worse. So we thought it was important to get that message out to that we were not happy with their lack of leadership um, during, uh, before, during, and, and after. So we're on the 10th of April. Um, we still don't have a draft. Um, usually we, because negotiations were done in-house, um, then I would sit, or because I've been the lead negotiator with the manager of academic relations, we'd go through all the proposals and sit together to put the draft collective agreement. But now that's been, of course, um, given to this lawyer's firm to do, and we'll wait till that's put together. So we got part of it. No, not actually, we didn't get part of the draft. We just got, because at that last minute, there were so many um, emails and stuff we scribbled on a piece of paper. So putting all of that, what we did agree to, all the proposals together is taking up, of course, uh, some time. And this lawyer uh, continues to take their sweet time getting anything done. So we're still waiting for this, which of course impacts deadlines. As you know, we have deadlines in our, in our uh, collective agreement. And so it creates more problems um, having this done by the law firm instead of just doing it ourselves. So my questions, my last questions, I'm sorry if I took so much time, um, is that we do have difficult labor relations, but now they're even more difficult, right? We have an administration that is unresponsive. We have to keep poking them to get stuff done. They're clearly hostile. Um, we know that we sit on different committees and they're not happy with us. Um, and they're also unproductive, like they make a lot of mistakes. Like we have to go back and say, you've made a mistake on this employment agreement. You made a mistake on this. You make it, can you rectify this? You know, like they're not, they're not competent like that. They're, they're, the bottom line is they're not competent. But again, that's the reality out there, but I refuse to accept it. And so what can our faculty association do to provide members with a healthier workplace? And how do we prepare for the next round? We're so late in the game now that next year we're going to, have to start preparing for the next round. But in light of what we face this round, we're going like we need we need to change things up so we don't relive relive this a second time. So back to you.